If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to How Islam Began by the channel One Islam Productions. The reason why I want to react to a video that talks about how Islam began is because I watched the movie The Message and that movie really left an imprint on me personally and on my wife, which is not a Muslim. It put things truly into perspective and explained details about the origin of Islam that we didn't know about. The anti-Islam crowd on YouTube always talks about the conquest of Islam and they like you to believe that this is how Islam started. The Muslims conquering foreign land and this is how Islam came about. But this is not the origin of Islam at all. Because Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, grows up in back then pagan Arabia. So he is surrounded by paganism and he stands up against his own people. He went against the traditions of his own tribe, abolishing paganism. Those pre-Islamic Arabs were involved in all kinds of filthy practices, such as burying their newborn daughters. I truly believe that if you show people the origins of Islam, it will get them so much closer to the message. And now guys, before we start the video, as always, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support this channel. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Contrary to popular belief, Islam is not a new religion that came into existence a mere 1400 years ago. Islam in truth has existed since the first moment that man set foot on earth. Alright, and my lengthy intro was for absolutely nothing. Today, apparently, we're going to discuss that Islam is the primordial religion, the religion of Adam. As Muslims, we believe that Islam started with the very first man. Totally different topic, nevertheless interesting. Let's proceed. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last prophet tasked with conveying the final form of Islam which was the continuation, the culmination, the completion of Allah's universal message to mankind, as revealed to all of Allah's previous messengers and prophets. In the 6th century CE, Arabia was a polytheistic society with many gods and goddesses worshipped by different tribes and communities. This video takes me on a roller coaster ride, man. So after all, we do gonna discuss the history of Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born into a family of merchants who were active in the trade routes throughout Arabia. And he was exposed to the religious beliefs and practices of many different communities during his travels. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was often conflicted about the beliefs and evil practices of his people. Around the age of 40, he started to experience visions that would come true. During that time, he frequently meditated in the cave of Hira, located on the outskirts of Mecca. This is an aspect that is very fascinating to me personally when we see that Prophet Muhammad, before receiving the revelation, was already meditating in caves. And this is a practice that we find with mystics. Seclusion, fasting, asceticism, those are all practices used by mystics to get closer to the divine. And this is why, and I never made a secret about this, I personally am very interested in Tassan or others like to call it Sufism, call it what you will. But the inner dimension of Islam, the sciences of the soul, so to speak, were always extremely important and fascinating to me. Even before reverting to Islam, even before becoming a Christian again, I always was interested in spirituality and getting closer to God. But on one fateful night in 610 CE, while in solitude at the cave of Hira, the revelation of the glorious Quran began. The Night of Glory, which Muslims refer to as Laylatul Qadr, is a night that marks the revelation of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him by the angel Jibreel. Yet again, I have to repeat this truly an inspirational subject to me personally. Even in the Bible, we read that Jesus, may peace be upon him, went to the desert and fasted for 40 days. And by his example, you see certain priests and monks mimic what he does and they go to the desert as well and live in seclusion to get closer to God. 
So for me personally, this is clear proof for a mystical aspect of Islam, to say at the very least. And therefore, I do understand the Sufi, the mystics claim that Tasawwuf or Sufism, or yet again, call it what you will, was there from the beginning. The Sufi claim is that it's not a bidah, not an innovation, but it was there from the start. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys think. The Revelation the account of the first revelation was narrated as follows. The angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, The angel caught me, forcibly, and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it any more. He then released me and again asked me to read and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it any more. He then released me and again asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me, and then released me and said, Read, in the name of your Lord who created, created man from a clinging clot. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, Bukhari. At first Muhammad peace be upon him was confused and didn't understand the experience. After he described what had happened to his wife Khadija, she comforted him and stood by his side. Upon receiving further revelation, he was instructed to convey Islam to his people. However, unlike Khadija, they were not so understanding and most of them rejected his message. Yes, and this is exactly what I said in the beginning. Many non-Muslims do not know this and many Islam haters tell you that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, went to a foreign land somewhere, right? And he was fighting those pagans, taking over their land, blah, blah, blah. The reality is, as the video just mentioned, those were his people. This is a humongous act of courage, of course, if you would only understand. This man grows up in a society that is predominantly pagan. This is what he's surrounded by. He's surrounded by idol worship. And then he receives revelation and he is commanded to preach pure monotheism. The submission to one God alone, the creator of all things. And this is what he does without compromise. The pagans try to fight him first. Then they try to bribe him. Then they try to befriend him. They try everything they can just to cling on to their paganism but islam came to his lands and this is why prophet muhammad may peace be upon him stands up against his own people fights his own people for the greater good i.e islam the submission to one god alone they believed his words would anger their gods and disrupt their prosperous trade routes exactly right despite this the people refrained from taking any action beyond harsh words because muhammad's peace be upon him wife held a great deal of influence in Mecca, and his uncle Abu Talib was the chief of the Banu Hashim clan. This provided Muhammad peace be upon him with some degree of protection. So please let me know in the comment section if this is correct here in the video. They say he's been only attacked with harsh words. I personally have heard, however, that the pagans attacked him, throwing stones, spitting on him, etc, etc. So please let me know which one is right in the comment section. However, in the year 619 CE, both Khadija and Abu Talib passed away. This became known as the Year of Sorrow. And following his mourning, Muhammad peace be upon him and his small group of followers were exposed to physical persecution from the Quraysh tribe that ah, controlled okay. Mecca. Now it makes sense. Got it. Migration Later on, Hijra. Then. In 620 CE, during the pilgrimage season, Muhammad peace be upon him met with delegates from Medina and presented the message of Islam to them. Convinced by his words, they accepted Islam and promised to preach it to their people. They hoped to unite the bickering tribes of Medina under the banner of Islam. Their efforts were quite successful and Islam spread throughout Medina. Yeah, and this is something that people don't know either. The Arab tribes prior to Islam were attacking each other. They were in constant infighting. And this is very similar to, for example, the Greek tribes, the Spartans against the Athenians. Or on the Balkans, the Slavs were infighting as well up to the 90s. This is common practice among ethnically identical people. It happened throughout history. And therefore in Arabia, it was no different. 
when those Arabic tribes were attacking each other and only Islam united them. But this beautiful aspect of Islam is of course not shown whatsoever. They're only going to tell you about bad, bad war, conquest, yada, yada, yada. They're not talking about the beautiful unifying aspect of Islam. During his time in Medina, Prophet Muhammad continued to receive visits from Angel Jibreel and shared the divine messages with his growing following. Islam spread far and wide, and it wasn't long before the first Islamic community was established. This model for the Islamic State was based on the principles of sovereignty of Allah, justice, consultation and accountability. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, led the people of Medina through thick and thin and fostered a strong sense of community and brotherhood among the believers. Beautiful. Hudaybiyah, the turning point. The Treaty of Hudaybiyah was signed between the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Meccans in 628 AD and contained the following terms. 1. The Muslims had to return to Medina this time, but would be allowed to enter Mecca the following year to perform the pilgrimage. 2. The Muslims would not be allowed to carry any weapons with them on the pilgrimage, except sheathed swords in their bags for self-defense. 3. Any Meccan who wished to join the Muslims and migrate to Medina would have to be returned to Mecca. But any Medinan who wished to join the people of Mecca and migrate to Mecca would not be returned. 4. The two sides me, would refrain from any hostilities before. or violence for the duration of the treaty. 5. Other tribes were allowed to join the treaty with them and choose where their allegiance lied. Importance of the Treaty The Treaty of Hudaybiyah was a significant moment in Islamic history for several reasons. Firstly, it allowed the Muslims to perform the pilgrimage to Mecca, which was a sacred duty for all believers, but had been denied to them for many years. This was a major symbolic victory for the Muslims and helped to boost their morale and confidence. Secondly, the treaty marked a turning point in the conflict between the Muslims and the Meccans. The truce allowed both sides to step back from the brink of war and gave them an opportunity to negotiate a peaceful resolution to their differences. Thirdly, the treaty demonstrated the Prophet Muhammad's skill as a negotiator and his commitment to finding peaceful and practical solutions to conflicts. The terms of the treaty were not entirely favorable to the Muslims, however, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, understood that this was the best possible outcome at the time and was willing to make concessions for the sake of peace. Yes, and this is an aspect that is absolutely misunderstood in this day and age as well. People have this all or nothing attitude on the non-Muslim side, but even on the Muslim side, we see that sometimes. Ultimately, we see here the Prophet Muhammad wasallam negotiated in order to keep peace and have the best possible outcome. So this was not an all or nothing approach. This was not just black and white. No, it was more balanced, more nuanced. And the same can apply nowadays as well, of course, following this beautiful example. Oftentimes I hear this that Muslims do not want to cooperate nowadays with Christians at all. And I find like this we're doing ourselves a huge disservice. If we look for example in the recent interview of the Patrick Bad David podcast, we see a Christian facilitating a dialogue between Muslims and so-called Christians. So in a legion like this where nobody compromises their faith, however works together for a greater good, is always productive. We should definitely take an example of this. Lessons for Muslims today. The there Treaty of Hudaybiyah holds many important lessons for Muslims mm, today. Very interesting, man. Firstly, it teaches us the importance of patience, perseverance and trust in Allah's plan. Right on. The Muslims had been struggling for many years to establish their religion and faced numerous obstacles and setbacks along the way. However, they did not give up hope and eventually their patience and perseverance paid off. At a time when Arabian tribes were divided and often in conflict, Muhammad peace be upon him's message of monotheism and social justice resonated with many. By uniting these tribes under a common religious and political banner, Islam fostered unity and cooperation among its followers. This unifying force is still evident today, as Muslims from diverse backgrounds and cultures find common ground in their shared faith.
All right, this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut the video off here. It continues a bit further. However, for the sake of this channel, in order to please YouTube over here, we cannot play the whole video anymore. So if you want to check out the whole video, head over to One Islam Productions and check out the video How Islam Began. They have many more videos that you can watch as well. That being said, especially the end of the video, I found very powerful because it reminded us Muslims to have patience and to persevere and ultimately, of course, course to trust in Allah's plan because everything happens within Allah's plan. Every scenario, every possible scenario that you can think of, be it the natural catastrophes or the wars in Muslim lands, the attacks from the West, be it physically or be it culturally, all of this happens within Allah's plan and therefore there must be a greater good to it. We as Muslims, we have to submit our will to Allah and therefore we have to accept the situation and the unfolding of the situation as well. In this way, we we are commanded to be patient after all. I am just a revert to Islam, as I said many, many times. I live in Thailand. Thailand is not a Muslim country. However, the Muslim community within Thailand is absolutely amazing. And this is what I am happy about. I am not thinking, I'm not fantasizing about an Islamic Thailand. Maybe, inshallah, one day it will happen. However, at the moment it is predominantly Buddhist. And hey, maybe it will stay like that for the longest time. But this is none of my concern. I love this country, this way. I came here. I can practice Islam. I can pray five times a day. I can eat halal food. I can go to Juma. I can go to the mosque every day if I want to. I'm surrounded by great people, Muslims and non-Muslims. All I can do is focus on myself. And this, of course, reminds me of a quote from the Quran. Allah never changes the condition of a people unless they strive to change themselves. And this is really what it boils down to in this day and age, because the message of Islam is already established. The message is here. Anybody can accept it. There is no compulsion in religion. We know this. So the only thing that is left to do is, of course, be better Muslims. That's literally what it is. The only thing that we can do as individuals is work on ourselves and perfect our Islam. And nobody said it better than Rumi. He said, yesterday I was clever. I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise. I am changing myself. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.